Welcome to the 14th episode of Beta Test. And this is the second episode we'll be exploring the game Vigor. Uh, in the previous episode, I'd mentioned that I believed that we were on patch 0 0.8, so kind of closing in on release. But well, it ends up that um, I was wrong. It was it's actually an earlier patch. 0 0.8 comes out this week. And so I'll try to get some footage of that to put in the next episode because they are adding some things. But here we have a slide showing some things they've already added. Um, there's a building on each map that has been boarded up and it has some really good loot in it if you can get in there to it but whenever you try to get into it it alerts everybody on the map that you're doing it so it's a, another way to draw people in together uh, kind of like what we talked about with Realm Royale and you know all those different games that do that Vigor does that too even if it isn't a battle royale um, it also shows that we have a female model for our character it also shows the scarecrows and the um, firing range both of those we saw last time the scarecrows actually react or take the same damage that another outlander or player would so that lets you know how many rounds you need to put in somebody with any given gun to defeat them so right now I'm looking at my options at the crafting table as far as what weapons I have to determine what I want to do because like I said before you get to determine your own rules of engagement how much you want to go in guns blazing, how much you want to not get into fights at all, that sort of thing. Because anything I take with me on an encounter, if I die, I lose whatever that is. So if I were to go in with you know, a weapon in each of four slots and a bunch of ammo, if I die, I lose every last bit of it. Every bullet I fire, I lose. So it's very much about resource management. So for this first one, I think I'm going to go in with just the pistol and 30 rounds of ammo. And I'm going to go ahead and launch the encounter now. Once I do, it's going to give me a random map, and now my loadout is locked in. Basically a pistol and 30 bullets. That's my loadout. So I'll do another one later where I go in with absolutely nothing. Um, I'll do another one where I go in a little more loaded for bear, but I generally am going to play where I'm avoiding encounters. We're heading to the Diverge Forest. I'll talk about that map in a minute. But I'm generally going to try to avoid encounters. At some point, though, for at least one of these encounters, I will try to actually accomplish one of the bigger tasks, just so you can see what that's like. I'll be honest, I'll probably end up dead. But at least you'll get a chance to see what it's like and how intense the gameplay can be. So the, the Diverge, I'm sure I'm saying that incorrectly, Forest, I remember this map as being pretty sparse when it comes to buildings. So that's one way that that map gets you close together is because there's very few places to find stuff. That being said, there's a lot of trees with snow impacted on them. So there's a lot of places to hide in the forest and stuff like that. It's just like, you know, once you go to where the actual supplies are, it's going to be pretty easy to find you. So what it does is it, you know, loads into the map and there are going to be anywhere between 8 and 16 players on a map. It doesn't tell you how many, it doesn't tell you when a player dies, anything like that. So you really have no idea. And it always takes a minute for the textures to pop in for some reason. And it was like this before, but here we are. Very snowy, very cold. You can see my character's breath, which is kind of a nice touch. So we're going to go ahead and do some exploring. I'm going to pull up the map here. And you see some stuff that's already marked on there. But I'm going to just go to a point of interest that's on the map that is close to where I am. And I want to see what I can find. So there's the map again. And I, pro I probably need to pull out my pistol at some point. But since I probably am not going to encounter anybody right now, I'm just like um, any other you know, like a battle royale, there, there's no radar or anything like that to detect where their enemies are. You either see them with your own eyes or you don't. Um, and they either see you or they don't. Okay, here we go. I'm going to sneak up closer. So we've got a little, whatever this is, a shed type thing out here in the middle of nowhere. So hopefully I can find some supplies. Let's see. Okay, that door's open. Somebody who was probably already here or is still here, but I don't think anybody's here at the moment. And I think they've already cleared this place out. So I'm going to go ahead and go see if I can find something else. I'm just going to make a run for it in case they're hiding nearby. So I'm going to head over here where I think there's a building. Okay, now you can hear a firefight going on. 
off in the distance. That's players, you know, that are fighting each other. And so, you know, every bullet they just use, they're not getting back. But they're hoping they can defeat the other person and get all their gear. So I'm pulling my pistol out, just in case somebody finds me. And I'm going to go to these, what may be the ugliest yellow houses I've ever seen. And I'm going to try to search these. See what we can find. Okay. So one thing about the houses that I've noticed is that they are a bit claustrophobic at times. This looks more like this is a garage. And somebody may have already come through here and found stuff. Yeah, I don't see anything. And there's another house. There's a car. I'm going to go ahead and go around this way. Oh, hello. Oh, gun. I'll take that. And a pack of fertilizer. I'll take that too. That'll help me if I start getting a garden going back at my shelter to grow myself food. I'll be able to use that. Okay. Now here's what I mean. Like Now that this door's open, then I just opened it. And I didn't close it behind me. So anybody that walks by is going to know that somebody's either inside or has already gone through here. That doesn't mean they found everything, though. Sometimes you might miss... Whoa. Yeah, like that. I almost missed those. There they are. The cabinet's up top I can search. And so I could have missed those. So sometimes it is worth it. But as you're on the map, um, one thing to be aware, this does not have like a circle closing in and making you get closer together. It doesn't do that. Ooh, covered. Um, instead, what it does is there's a point on the map and one side or corner or something where um, the a wave of radiation will come in, you know, because this is after nuclear war and stuff. And, you know, you're actually going into the irradiated areas to find supplies where you're living is one of the few places that isn't irradiated. So it's going to come onto the map from a certain direction the longer the encounter goes on and you'll start taking damage. I'm going to switch out to this other weapon and try to load it. Okay, I don't have any ammo for the other weapon, so let's just go back to the pistol. But nonetheless, you know, that's another method of kind of keeping you moving. You don't want to stay when that radiation starts hitting because you'll start taking damage and... You know, damage in this game is hard to recover from. If you don't have bandages or whatever, you don't heal, and yeah, it can get real ugly real quick. So I think I am done with this house, and I'm going to get out of here. You know, I'm actually thinking I might try to just head out of here completely. Because I found when I played before, finding a weapon is a big deal. Like, uh, that's a big deal, so I'm going to try to get back to where I started. Because finding a weapon, and now I have, if I can get out of here with that weapon, that's a new weapon in my arsenal back at the base that I can use later. And I don't think this is a weapon I had before. I don't think it's one of the three I found in the tutorial. I think it's a completely different weapon. And I know that it used to be you could break down a weapon and get a weapon part. And you could use the, if you got one of each part for each weapon, you could start crafting that weapon yourself. Right now, there's only three weapons I can craft, I believe, and, unless they've changed this. And that's the three I got in the tutorial. The that submachine gun or assault rifle or whatever that thing is, the Suomi, some numbers, um, then that pistol I'm using now, the Luger I think it is, and of course the knife. See now, this looks pretty cool. I mean, it feels desolate, it feels empty, it feels like, you know, if Europe were devastated by a war and there were only a few people left, because it's empty and yet at the same time it's a little scary because you don't know who else is out there looking for you or looking at you. So we're going to try to finish this encounter and get out of here with what I found. And that, that's just a habit I picked. Hey, that's where I spawned in, I think. But that's a habit I picked up when I played before, is if I ever was able to find a weapon or any fertilizer and stuff like that, I would usually make a run for it at that point, especially if it's a weapon I didn't already have the ability to craft so I could get it back and I just found a dead end. Good job. So, let's see. I see now. I'm going along the edge of the map. And a lot of people aren't going to be up here at the edge of the map because there's nothing to find here, generally speaking. So, I'm going to just try to get out of here. And that way I can show you another expedition, time permitting. See, now, if I get in here, this is a great example. Nobody will be able to see me very well once you're inside those trees. So, this map is good about that sort of thing. The problem is there are so few places to search, you've got to, you know, get in there and just hope 
no one's there. Okay. So I'm trying to find my way out of here. It's got to be right around here somewhere. There we go. You can see it painted on the rock up ahead. This is the exit. See that military vehicle there? I've tried to search those before, but I don't think I've ever really found anything. I heard somebody shoot a minute ago, I think. So I'm going to run up here. You should see pop up in a second. There it is, the countdown. Once you get close enough to exit, it'll give you a 10 second countdown. And after the 10 seconds is up, as long as you're in that range, you will automatically exit. It used to be there was a little pile of rocks, and if you hit the little pile of rocks, it will automatically teleport you. So that's the stuff I got out of there with. The pistol I already had, but I have a new gun, and I have some other supplies. So I'm heading back to my, and I am back to my shelter. So I am going to set up for another expedition. So let's head over here, or another encounter. Sorry, I did it again. Let's, I'm going to put that weapon up because I don't want to bring it in. I don't have any ammo for it, so I don't want to bring it in. And this is the Luger, you know, since I'm not ready to go anywhere yet, I'm going to leave this in here. I'm going to put up the bullets too. I did find some bullets, the same kind that my Luger uses. Okay, so there's a shotgun. That's... Hmm. So there's several different weapons here, and each weapon handles quite differently, which is what that firing range is for. It gives you the opportunity to go out there and test them out to see how they work, to get used to them. Because the combat in this is a little shaky. It's reminiscent of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, honestly, with its. And yeah, and I need to mention this. This is really important. Um, uh, Vigor, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is the same way. There is no aim assist at all. So, oh, that is cool. I can go into each individual gun and look at it. And that one says sodomy on the side. That's interesting. But nonetheless, um, uh, it, there is no aim assist. So whenever you try to fire at someone, you have to actually be able to aim well. It's not like, and I've seen this with Call of Duty many times, where you can go around a corner with a sniper rifle and they're only eight feet in front of you, which is way, out of, way too close to use any kind of a weapon like that in real life. And all you do is tap left trigger and and then right trigger half a second later and you've basically shot them and they're dead it, it makes no sense whatsoever it just it can't work that way and so the, this game does not work that way and you have to you know like prepare for everything and the so the gunplay is a little more touchy there's a the shotgun i like that they have the detail there so we can do some of that but either way um so the lack of aim assist makes it more of a hardcore experience you know, uh, whatever hardcore means, but, you know, we'll go with that. Also, you know, the high stakes every time you go into an encounter makes it hardcore. Um, the lack of the ability to know where anybody is, any count of it, uh, the fact of if you even know anybody's there. So I jumped ahead here, and I'm trying to get loaded up. I think what I'm going to do is test out these weapons I just found. I want to see how they fire. Let's see. So I will take that one. And that one. So two weapons that I want to just experiment with and see how to use. So let's head on over to the firing range. And I know, you know, the one thing about this is, you know, I have unlimited ammo at the firing range, but if I go anywhere else, I have to, like, scavenge for ammo. But, you know, it's a video game. If it was supposed to make sense, it would not be a video game. All right, so let's try this. I think this is the shotgun. Uh, loading it would probably be wise. All right, break that plate. There is that plate too. Can I? Oh yeah, there you go. See, a shotgun has spread. I was wondering if I could aim so I'd take out both plates, and I did. Now there's ADSing. I'm aiming down sights, and in this game, let's see if I can get something that way. In this game, you um, aim down sights by pressing down on the right stick, I believe it was. Um, so it's not a left trigger ADS. Left trigger does aim. It just does more of a... Oh, man, I took him out. Um, it does more of a zoom in in the third-person view. But if you want to ADS, you have to tap down on the stick. So it gives you both firing options. See, now, this shotgun is clearly not meant to hit somebody from that distance because that's not what shotguns are for. So let's switch out to this... What is this thing? Oh, let's 
reload this and see what kind of gun this is. Assault rifle of some sort. Let's see. Oh yeah. And much like in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, in a lot of these you can switch them from single shot to multi shot. Oh, there we go. That that's that's an iron sight right there. See, I'm trying. To, I mean, the targets go all the way up this thing, and some guns will have the range to hit way up there. Most will not. I'm. I think I got that one. I think I hit it there. This gun has some range. At least I think I'm hitting it. I mean, when I saw the little white lines come off. Okay, so I'm going to go back. The question is, do I want to go into my next encounter carrying all this stuff with me? You know, I'm leaning towards a big fat no, to be honest with you. I'm going to go ahead and drop these back off. Hmm. Let's see, I'm thinking this over. Okay, yeah, so the weapon that I can craft, I'm, like, I'm going to take one of those in with me. And we're going to go ahead and do another encounter. This will probably be our last encounter of the episode. And this time we're going to Fisk Factory. So, just like Fisk Factory, if I remember correctly, it has a lot more buildings. There's a lot of places to go. I think there's like a fishing area, if I'm remembering it, remembering it right. But nonetheless, I'm going to go in and see what I can find. And this time I'm, I've got a gun that I can actually use and see now here again the textures aren't popping in so when they get this game finished hopefully with the point eight update this will happen a little quicker but now it spawned me right here in the middle I mean like I'm right in the middle of town here so let's see if I can find a point of interest the barred up building is somewhere inside that green circle I am not messing with that all right let's see what I can find Okay, I've... All right, this was brilliant. Did I come in with a gun and no bullets? Because that would probably make me an idiot. And somebody's opening the vault. So if I wanted to get involved in a fight, I could. But since I have no bullets, that would be several layers of stupid. Oh, hello. There it is. So the initial version, it was really hard to get the cursor to, like, not cursor in this case, but the controller to line up so you could search stuff. It was really touchy and fidgety. It's still touchy and fidgety, but not as bad as it was. There's a definite improvement. I hope they clean that up more, though, because, I mean, the game is literally about looting. Uh-oh, somebody's nearby. The game is literally about looting. I need to be able to loot quickly and move my rear end. Let's see if I can get anything out of any of this stuff. Uh, shut that door just in case somebody comes in. And no. It's probably that. Yep, outside. Let's see what's over here. There's more houses. There's a boat. Too bad I can't just use a getaway boat and get out of here. I'm going to use it for cover. Okay. There, are, you know, I'm thinking, I know there are people nearby. What's. Well, hello. That crate looks like somebody died here. Oh, another weapon. Is there anything in here? Yep, this was where the safe was. They've already cleared it out. So, whoever cleared this thing out may be out here somewhere. Oh, crap. Okay, that, they were shooting at me. And with that, I'm going to go with the whole discretion is the better part of valor thing, and I'm going to run like a sissy. I am totally gone. I'm going to try to get out of here, because they may be coming after me. They wouldn't get much from me, but every little bit in this game counts. Every little bit matters. This was not the most successful sortie, but it wasn't too bad. I may try these cars on the way. Nothing. Nothing. Wait, I thought I saw something. Let's try going this side. Aha! I got a little something. Let's go. Yep, the exit's nearby. I'm just going to search these since I'm in the area. Nothing. There, that's the bottle of rocks. It used to be you could just do that. Oh, 
or something. I'll take it. Freebie. And there I'm out. So that expedition is over. Or I'm sorry. That encounter is over. So I will launch another encounter next time. And when I do that one, you know, I think that next one I will do, I will go in and I'll actually have some weapons on me. But let's see how the ones I found fire. One of them, this one's a carbine. So let's see. Come on, we got plates to shoot. Ah, there, that plate will never fight democracy again. Yeah, there we go. This gun's pretty cool. See, can I let's see what it does to the scarecrow? Oh, one shot to the head. Nice. Okay, interesting. It's a very tiny iron sight, but this gun is no frills. No. Can I get it? Let's see. I can't tell if I get that or not. I, I can't tell. But I like this gun. It has a lot of power. It has pretty good range. It's also the only one I have, so I'm not going to be running around with it trying to take anybody out anytime soon. That, that, that's just not going to happen. It'd be a really bad idea. I'm trying to hit something from way over there, and I, I can actually do some damage from that kind of distance. Being able to engage your enemy from a good distance is always nice. The key is learning how to fire in a game with no aim assist and with actual bullet drop and all that. It can be a little challenging if you're used to something that does it in a more simplified way. But this is pretty cool. I can't wait to like look at this one later on in the menu and you know see if there are any variants out there. Okay, good times. So we'll go ahead and reset this. It's convenient I was able to build that. Okay, so I think this is going to round up this episode of Beta Tests. So when we come back for the 15th episode, um, we will continue looking at Vigor. And I will go in with some weapons and try another um, encounter. And I will probably do an encounter where I actually try to get some of the big prize. So I hope you'll come back. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Give it a thumbs up, all that stuff. And I look forward to seeing you next time on beta test.